Well, good day and welcome to Commerce Today. My name is Darren Newbold and I'm excited to be here as always and definitely have my wonderful sidekick Josh here to uh, share with us our Commerce Today information and knowledge. And we have got a fun one to talk to you about because this is about something that you're hearing about every day or all every minute of every day right now. And that is what the heck is this chat GPT is? What, what is chat GPT and how is it transforming e-commerce? Josh, what the heck? What is this? Yeah. Well, and the, the really fun part is we came up with this idea for this episode uh, a few days ago. And then just last night, the news about <laughs> G- GPT-4 broke, and now everyone is talking about chat GPT. So, and we're having to kind of update on the fly. Um, there's a lot of new capabilities in the newest version. But uh, basically, chat GPT, um, as it will remind you of if you use it, uh, it's an AI-powered language model. Um, basically, it's a very specific type of artificial intelligence. Um, at its core, it's something you can chat with, basically, especially the, the, the chat GPT version. Um, you can finally have a friend. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and it uh, also has an API, and a lot of the power I'm learning is in that API. But the API still basically ties you into that same AI-powered language model um, that you can chat with and converse with. Well, very cool. Well, so that kind of gives us a little bit about it, but really the key is for where we're at, how is chat GPT, I think I had it wrong a couple times, but how is chat GPT really changing the game of e-commerce? How is it really affecting the things that happen in e-commerce and can it write code? Oh yeah. It's, it's writing code. It's writing product descriptions. Um, We'll even talk a little bit later. It's making strategic decisions, Um, but kind of Peeling those back uh, one by one, so chat GPT is writing e-commerce code right now. Um, yep, it, it's funny, I, I, as a former recovering software developer, I often said that, you know, my job is safe, the robots will not be coming for my job for a very long time, but they That was here. the first job they went after. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a, I feel a little targeted, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so there is a... Um, uh, Magento and Adobe Commerce plugin for a development environment called PHP Storm. Um, this plugin is made by an agency called Atwix, and they actually just released an update where within your development environment, you can bring ChatGPT into it. So as you're writing code, you can be talking to this AI that can also write code. Um, there's also guides online. People can show you how they've used ChatGPT uh, to create a WordPress or WooCommerce plugin, so it can make the entire module for you. Um, wow. So yeah, it's a powerful tool. Um, I know in the latest demo, the the GPT-4, which is the newest version, uh, they showed how somebody literally sketched out a website wireframe on a napkin, took a photo of it, gave uh, GPT-4 the photo, and it spit out all the code needed to run that website. Man, that is that is just crazy. I'm uh, I'm envisioning iRobot uh, next in in all of this, but. Okay, so as we as we do this, you you talked about a couple of the the plugins and things that are that are available now, even with Adobe Commerce. I'm sure there's other places that you can get things for this, even WordPress, WooCommerce, and those kind of things as as well, right? Correct. Yep. And then also beyond just writing code, it can even write your product descriptions for you. So again, back in the Magento Adobe world, there's a Magento two Chat GPT extension that will basically bring the AI right into your product description fields and you can basically give it some some rough bullet points, have it write a compelling product description. Um, something, kind of going a little bit deeper on that piece, um, something I've learned is you really have to tailor the prompt. You have to tailor what you tell the AI. Um, mm-hmm. So and it, and it feels weird. It's not like talking to a person. Like they really try to make it sound like you're sitting down and you're talking to a person. I think most people, if you talk to them the way that you need to talk to chat GPT to be effective, they would probably quit. (laughs) So it is not, uh, it's not the, uh, the basically the easiest or the, 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 the nice or gentle way in some ways, right? Correct. The way you were kind of describing to me a little earlier. Yeah. The more, the more information you give it, the better. And so I've learned like, instead of saying, you know, this is a blue widget, please write a product description for a blue widget. You would say, this is a blue widget. Please write a product description for Blue Widget. It is for my business. My business sells to these these target consumers in this industry doing this thing. Oh, by the way, do not use this word, this word, or this word. Um, and that's the piece we were talking about earlier where people have learned in trying to get around some of the restrictions on it that we'll talk about in a second. Um, 
it, it seems to respond differently if you type something in all caps or threaten it. So there are people that will actually say, do not use this word or you will die, um, which is, oh my God. again, not how you really want to talk to a person or an employee, but it affects the behavior of the bot and changes, basically makes the product description rights more accurate. Um, and it even goes beyond product descriptions. I know over on the Shopify side, there's a service called Yodel that you can plug in um, that will even write just general copy for you for your site. That is, it's it's a little scary, but hey, we'll keep on keep on keeping on. So we started to kind of go down the path of what could be some challenges around this, and and it's funny you were talking about product descriptions. My thought is is okay, writing the product descriptions is a pain in the butt, but what about just even taking all the pictures of the products and having all of those? And I'm guessing you probably can't do that necessarily, although it might be able to direct the cameras to do all that. Or it could just find product pictures for you, which we've we've gone down that path in, a, in another episode, I think. So I guess what are some other challenges that using chat GPT and e-commerce, what what might you run into? So one of the the big areas of concern around really all these AI technolo- technologies, but especially these language models, is they are only as good as the training data that was fed into it. And that training data, they try really hard to remove any bias from it, but there's, there's bias in everything. And uh, probably the most direct example of this is a few years back, Microsoft tried to do this, and they launched a a learning model like this onto the web, and they had to take it down within about 18 hours because people had fed so much hate speech into it that it basically started quoting Hitler and saying all sorts of terrible, horrible things. So they've learned their lesson. They're trying to really refine it with ChatGPT, but it's not like... All of its output needs to be reviewed by a human before it goes live on the web. It's not going to intentionally try to be biased, but it does sometimes make mistakes. Again, it's only as good as that um, that training data that was fed into it. Gosh, and imagine if they'd had Harlequin romance novels that all was fed into it. We can only imagine how that one went. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's an interesting, interesting challenges. So, all right. Let's take it to a next level, and this is where, in a way, it even gets scarier, but how can it help you with strategic decision-making? Uh, I know you were joking the other day, hey, it's taken over your, your role. You don't, we, don't, we don't need you anymore. I didn't and that's, go that okay. far. Okay, but it can do some of these strategic decision-making. I mean, talk to me about that. That sounds really crazy. Yeah, and this is where you, you can't really get this out of the web interface yet. I mean, you can a little bit, but the real power is in their API because you can feed additional data into the API so you can teach it. You can feed it all the information like your your strategic documents, your vision, your strategy for your business, the values for your business. You feed all that in, and then you can start asking questions. Well, even, even some psychological profile kind of things, I mean, assessments, I should say, even uh, the uh, Myers-Briggs type of assessment or an Enneagram or any things like that, Colby is one of them that we use, that being able to plug those in to get more of a personality of the person that then you're asking the strategic decision. Yeah, well, and this is where I'm going to possibly get myself in trouble, and I'm glad my wife doesn't listen to podcasts. But uh, you can, and some of us may have, feed it in, feed in the um, – Enneagram, Colby, Myers-Briggs, all that of yourself and of a coworker, of yourself and a significant other. And then you can ask it questions about the relationship dynamics. And it actually is incredibly well-versed on all of those personality assessments. And that's another area where it gets a little scary because it's like, okay, oh my. this AI knows more about us than maybe we know about ourselves. Um, and so the, getting back to the strategic decision-making, you feed all that data into it and you ask it questions. And so I was even asking it questions kind of a, around a um, hypothetical e-commerce business and kind of said, hey, you know, if they want to expand, what type of product line should they add? What type of product assortment should they add? And it came back with some really good answers. Um, and again, this is where knowing what to ask it, I have found that if you say, you know, give me what product line I should add, you'll get an okay response. If you say, give me the top three product lines you feel I should add and why, you'll get probably a different response and a more detailed, more accurate response. And so sometimes I even, and again, this is where you can't talk to this thing like a person, and it does feel a little weird, but 
I'll ask it the exact same question, but then I'll just add a little bit more detail, a little bit more detail, or say, no, give me five more, give me five more. Um, again, in a way that if this is an employee, they would absolutely walk yeah, out of the room. Right. But it seems to help chat GPT understand you and craft a better response. Okay. So I'm a merchant. I'm listening here. I'm scared beyond the capacity for rational thought, but... For some reason, we like you, Josh, and we like this awesome commerce today. So we're thinking about we got to be involved in this. So how do I get prepared? I mean, you've already talked about chat GPT. You've talked about the web interface and, and the API and plugging in stuff to it and feeding things to it. What? Uh, how do I do that? What, what, what does that look like? Yeah, I think if you are not technical and you, you don't have a technical resource that you can kind of task within your company to work on this, um, I would just start by signing up for the web interface for chat, chat GPT. Um, there is a free version, especially with the news about GPT-4 breaking. It's very hard to get into the free version right now. The paid version is $20 a month. Um, that $20 a month seems like a pretty solid investment right now. Um, so that's where I would start. If you do have a tech team or you're more technical, then that's where I would start looking at the API and start tying it in there. But there's also this huge rush now. Everyone is trying to integrate already before GPT-4. Everyone's trying to integrate chat GPT into their services. It's only going to get more intense with GPT-4. Um, for instance, I know there's a Slack beta that you can sign up for that will bring chat GPT into your Slack instance. And I know that my team is already... Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Oh, my team's <laughs> already excited about this. And again, I feel a little, little targeted, but one of the top features of chat GPT and Slack is it will summarize long messages for you. So apparently some people don't like the length of my message. Somebody, somebody in this room might, uh, might be a person that does that kind of thing. Oh, oh. Um, so that's another way you can use it today is look at these products that are integrating this technology. And again, you know me, I don't like buzzwords and I don't like things that are, you know, just hype. Um, and I know we've had hype for years of, oh, this adds AI, that adds AI. You know, all the platforms have been guilty of it, of just saying, oh, we got this cool new AI feature. But this chat GPT technology, this is what's really transforming and applying AI to our businesses in a powerful way. Do you see, I guess, as, as I'm thinking of a, of, a, of a merchant, all right, let's say I'm mid-level tech, technical technically able to do things i also have a team that can really dig into the api if we needed to but is there anything in particular at least yet that i either should really look for or look out for and maybe you don't know the answer to that and i'm kind of throwing this to you ad hoc but what do you think yeah i think that um you really have to decide how you want to leverage it, how much you want to invest into it. So something that I've been experimenting with is building out basically a very bespoke version of chat GPT that understands me and my business really well. And that's, I know just enough development to code that myself. Um, and that so far has been incredibly valuable. So that could be something that other companies want to emulate and do. Um, at the same time, you know, if that, doesn't seem like something you would use, doesn't seem like something worthwhile, that's where I would kind of maybe pull back and say, okay, let's just look and see what, what services do we already use that are going to start integrating in with ChatGPT. Is this something I'd want to maybe jump on and, and see how it could help my my development team as they're doing, if they're doing any development work on my side? Is this something that could help and improve maybe their coding? Or is it going to suddenly... Well, now, now, Darren, you have me scared that every agency out there is going to say, we're the chat GPT powered agency. You should hire <laughs> us, um, which might mean nothing. <laughs> but it right. might mean that they once went to the website and typed in a question. Um, be careful. I think it can definitely help. But I think like all new technologies and buzzwords, there's some people that are going to use it just to try to sell you. And there's some people that are actually going to be driving value out of it. Um, I will say that I actually use chat GPT to help me code some of the things I'm doing in chat GPT, which was a little weird. Um, from that experience, I can tell you it's not always right. Sometimes it does make mistakes. And so this isn't something that you can take someone like, let's say you have a Magento website. You're not going to be able to take some random developer off the street that doesn't know PHP or doesn't know Magento and say, okay, here's chat GPT, go build my Magento website for me. It's not to that level yet. Whew, I was worried about that because I thought, man, next thing I know, they're going to throw me and I'm going to have to start coding uh, Magento websites. That's, that truly is danger, Will Robinson, <laughs> at that point. 
Well, as we kind of wrap this up and, and kind of any key takeaways and thoughts, one of the things, and this might be a topic for even another whole podcast that we do, but real quick, for the Enneagram 6s out there, you just plugged in a whole bunch of your own personal data into this system that ultimately touches some levels of the internet and is now in the ether. Not that most of this information probably wasn't already there anyway, but just kind of thinking about this, what are the concerns? So this is where you Privacy definitely that stuff. Yeah. yeah, this is where you definitely want to read the user agreement. And even on the API, I noticed they've changed some of the, the wording in the agreement to where I believe, but verify, <laughs> I believe that now they say they are no longer basically using the private data you send via the API to train the model. Um, so basically before the private data that was going into it was being used to train it, which means it could show up in other people's responses. Um, mm -hmm. And that's also where, so you know me, I'm a fan of open source, and it is not anywhere near as easy to set up as ChatGPT, but there is an open source competitor to ChatGPT that you can, if you have a very powerful computer, you can actually run it locally and not use an API, and then all your data stays with you. You get all of those same protections of, like if you're running an open source system yourself on your own server. So. Mm. That is um, probably the alternative. If I'm really concerned, if I'm feeding, you know, nuclear launch codes or something into this and want to make sure they're absolutely secure, then, yeah, which please don't. Yeah. Um, we had a power outage earlier. And we're like, all right, so <laughs> chat GBT was announced. Our power's gone out. This is Skynet. <laughs> right. So no nuclear launch codes in chat GPT, please. Well, we'll but. see if this gets shut down at any moment. <laughs> yeah. also, and there's helicopters that arrive. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Last thoughts as we recap and kind of close this up. What's what's kind of our key takeaway that you want people to walk away with on this? I think there's a lot of people that did not have AI on their roadmap this year um, that did not have chat GPT on the roadmap. And I'm thinking specifically of email. We didn't even versions. talk about it when we were talking about the roadmap. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, although we had fun with our last we AI did. episode. Um, I would say... Find some time in your schedule to think about AI and to think specifically about how you could leverage ChatGPT in your business. Um, it can literally be applied anywhere at this point, and we are still figuring out the the best uses of it. I think at 20 bucks a month for an account, it's just a no-brainer to at least try it. You might try it. You might decide it's, it doesn't fit for your business. It doesn't work. But this is one of those new technologies. Um, imagine if you were the very first business when the iPhone was first announced and you were the first business to figure out how can I best leverage the iPhone to sell more and how well you would be doing today. Chat GPT, I feel like, is another iPhone moment. Yes, I can definitely see that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy you joined us here today. Um, I do want to make the disclaimer. We are real people. We are not chat gpt here yes. and yet and anyway as always you guys have a uh, have a great day please follow us and uh love to hear from you and have a great rest of your day take care